In this tutorial, we're gonna make the spaceship move in two different ways using FSMs. So we're going to get key inputs, and then every time the key is pressed, we'll move the spaceship a little bit. And then the other way is that as long as you hold the key down, the spaceship will move. And we're gonna do that in a couple different ways within an FSM. Hey, I'm Jerry from Blizz Studio, the creator of the Apple featured game, Trixel Rocket. If you're ready for this tutorial, let's get started. So if you remember in our last tutorial, we actually made our spaceship move and we did that using an FSM and then iTween to then move the object. When it finished that animation, then it would go to the next state and then move the spaceship the opposite direction, then just continue that loop, okay? That was kind of automatic. So we're gonna go ahead and start to take a look at using key inputs. And we're gonna do this in two different ways. So I can go ahead and utilize this FSM, but I'm gonna go ahead and just start over from scratch just so we know uh, what we're gonna do. We have nothing in this state one, and what we're gonna do is to go ahead and change the name of this. Now, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to listener. And that, again, this is just a name that I like to use to let me know what that particular state is doing. So what we're gonna be doing is listening for key inputs. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go up to our action browser. We are going to look for get key. So you can see there's three options for get key. Uh, under the input option, there is get key, get key down, get key up. So if we click a button down, we are pulling that input. And then if we hold, then nothing's gonna happen. If we let our key up, that would be a get key up uh, action. So in this case, we're gonna do a get key down. So I'm gonna take that action, drag that over into my listener, and in this, we're listening to get key down. So if there's a key that's down. So I drag the get key down action in, and you can see there's a couple different options for here. You can see there's key, and then if you click on the drop down, there's a big long list of all the different keys that we can grab. So for mouse, for joysticks, uh, there's all kinds of really cool things that you can do. So in this case, I'm gonna just use my left and right arrow keys. So I wanna get a key down for left. And then we need to send event. Now we're not gonna send a finished event because where we want to just stay on this state until something happens. And so we're gonna create a new event. So we're gonna create an event that's left key. So we've created that event, but it's not attached to our state yet. So we go ahead and just click that red box, boom, and now we have left key. And we don't need this finished uh, transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that or control click and then just delete transition. So we just have our left key. I also need to go ahead and create another event for right key. So let's do another get key down action. So we're gonna be listening for both the right and the left keys. And in this case, I'm gonna choose the right arrow and then we need to send an event and I don't have an event for right yet. So let's go ahead and add that. So right key, create event. And it's saying, hey, we don't have that as a transition yet and we need it. So let's click that. And now we have right key and left key. So what this is doing is saying, hey, if you've clicked down on the left key or clicked down on the right key, then we're gonna send it to another state. So we don't have those states yet. So let's go ahead and set those up. So I'm gonna uh, add state. So right click or control click. So for the left, I'm gonna have this as move left. So we're, again, we're gonna use iTween. And we need to, there's a, again, we're gonna do a move. We're gonna do either move by, move add, move from, move to. 
And in this case, we'll just go ahead and do a move add. So let's drag that over. And what game object is it that we want to manipulate? Well, we're gonna, we have this FSM attached to our rocket. That's the object that we wanna move. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this as use owner. And then we need to choose a vector. And I'm just going to open up the variables for the X, Y, Z, and then just choose X as one. And if you remember from our last demo, if you move the object with a positive number, it moves to the right. If you move it with a negative number, it moves it to the left. So in this case, we need to change this X from a positive one to a negative one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move left versus right. Okay, so that is our move left. We're using the owner. We're gonna move left one. We'll go ahead and just leave this at one right now. Actually, that's probably gonna be a little bit long. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a 0.5. So that's half of a second. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this as linear easing. And then we need to have an event. So in this case, we're gonna do a finished event and we need to add a transition. So you can see that it's saying, hey, add a transition. Click that and then we wanna transition back to our listener. So here we need to drag from the left key in the listener over to the move left. So what, what's happening here in the listener, it's saying, hey, does somebody have a left arrow key down? If so, send them over to this move left state. And then in this state, we're gonna move that over by one unit to the left. When it's finished animating the player, we're going to then go back to the listener to continue to listen for the next key input. So let's just test this real quick to see if this works real quick. I'm gonna hit play. And you can see it's green, it's saying, hey, everything's okay. I'm listening for the write down key, but we're not sending it to anywhere yet. Uh, but if I hit the left key, boom, you can see that we're transitioning over to the move left. The move left animates our character over by one space, and then it's going back to listening. So if I hit left arrow again, boom, we're gonna continue to move that. All right, that works, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and set up the right transition. So we're gonna add another state, so add state, and we're gonna do again, move add by, and I need to uh, change the name of this to move right. So move right, we need to click on move right, the transition, and move it to over to the move right state. And then we need to go over to our state and we need to finish setting this up. We're gonna uncheck the little button there so we can in input our X value. And since we're moving to the right, it's going to be a positive value this time. So we put in one, and I also wanna change the time of that to be 0.5 seconds, so half a second and then leave the easing the same there. And then at the finished event, we need to click on finished. And again, I don't have that transition yet here. You don't see a finished. So I click to add to finished. And when it's finished, we're gonna go back to the listener. So here we've created two little loops. We've created a listener that's listening for key inputs. If the left key is down, we're going to the action that says move this object left. Then it go back, goes back to the listener and then, then we have the listener still active, and it, if I hit the right arrow key, then it's gonna move the spaceship right, and then go back to the listener again. So we've created this cool little loop. All right, so let's give this a test one more time to make sure everything works. Boom, there we go. So now I am moving left and right at one unit at a time. Now, if I wanted to change these if I wanted to make it faster or I wanted to go further distance I could easily move that by three units let's do the same thing here let's change that to three and let's see what happens there boom so I'm moving a further distance with each of those now there's a lot of different instances where you can use this in all kinds of different types of games so that is one way of moving our character all right so I'm going to just delete all of this and we're gonna start all over again. Get rid of these get key downs. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these transitions real quick. There we go. Okay, so now we're back to the start again. 
So instead of when the key gets pushed down, we move the character by one unit or however far, we're going to have it continually update the position of the character uh, over time. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are. We're back to the uh, kind of a blank state. So I'm going to go to our project settings. So edit project settings. And then I'm going to click on input manager. So these are kind of predefined axes that we can actually grab. So in this case, we have horizontal. We open that up. You can see that it affects both the left and right keys. So negative button, positive cutting button, and also listening for the A and the D key for as, as an alternative. So all four of those keys will actually change the, the way our character is going to move. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the name here. I would go ahead and just copy and paste the name. So let's copy that. So in our listener, we want to use the get axis action. And I'm going to drag that right into my listener. And then the axis name is the, we want to paste down in the name that we copied. So we're going to paste, so horizontal. So we're listening for when any of those four keys are being input, then we're going to apply a multiplier of one currently the, by default. We can change that later, but we're going to take and we're going to store that value in a variable. So I need to go ahead and set up that variable. So you can see that I need to choose something. I don't have a variable. I need to create one. So I'm going to click new variable and we'll call this X move. So I will create a variable and I want to update it every frame. That's fine. If I click on variables, you can see that X move is now a variable and it is a float. And I'm not going to get into exactly what a float and all those kinds of things are just yet, but just know that if you use an action and then you create a variable, it will tell you what variable type it needs to be. So if you select the variable type down here, uh, which is partially off screen for you, there is float, int, bool, game object. There's a lot of different things. And we'll get into those at another time, but just know that uh, Playmaker helps you determine exactly which type that it needs, needs to be. So in this case, it's a float. So we're storing that value. So we're checking to see what the keys are, and then we're storing the value of that in a variable. Okay. Again, remember a variable is kind of like a little package of information that we can use for other things. So we've got the get axis and then we're going to take that and we're going to take the information that we've stored and we're going to update our spaceship. So I've chosen set velocity and we move that over into our state and we're going to be updating the owner. I also, it's telling me I need to add a rigid body component to my character. So let's go ahead and click that. It adds that rigid body component to our character. And then let's take a look at, we want to also set up that we're going to move on the X axis, which is the variable that we've set up here. So we've got X move. And if we click and drag, you can see X move is right there. That's the speed at which we're going to update our character's position. And then we also need to update this every frame. So as long as our key is down, we want to continually update this character. So we check every frame. And let's give this a test. And oh, my spaceship just fell off the screen. So if you take a look over at the rigid body, you can see that we have some mass. Okay. So just like in, just like in the real world, if you have mass to your body, right? If you like climb up a tree and you accidentally fall down, what happens? You, you know, you fall down. So we've done the same thing with our character. We're allowing it to fall down. And you can see that there's an option for use gravity. We don't want to use gravity. We just want to be able to update where our character is uh, based off of our key down. We don't want our character to fall. So let's give this a test now. And boom, there we go. We are now updating the character's position every frame based off of our key down. So I have left key down, I have right key down. Now it's kind of slow right now. So what I'm going to do is to update the multiplier and let's say that let's multiply the position by five. 
give that a test. And there we're moving a lot faster. So what we've done is we're grabbing the input from the A and D key and the arrow keys at the same time. Then we're using that information to set the velocity of our character moving left and right because we used, we chose the X axis. And that's another way we can make our character move. In this tutorial, we learned how to make our spaceship move in two different ways with our FSMs. We got key inputs and then we moved our spaceship one unit every time that we hit the key. And the other way was that we used our FSM to then get key inputs and move the character as long as the key was down. And in the next tutorial, we're going to start taking a look at adding effects to the spaceship so we can start making it look cool. All right, until next time, keep creating. And as always, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon so you know when the next video is available. Keep on creating.